As the first anniversary of Hurricane Maria making landfall in Puerto Rico approaches, Rev. Laura Ayala, Senior Pastor of First Baptist Church of Rio Piedras, shares about the impact of the storm, the response by the community, and the role of the church in the recovery efforts. Close to a year ago, we have been uh, going through a very interesting process, what I would call uh, a real transformation uh, process for us, um, not only as a country, but I would say that mostly for as a church. Um, as you all know, September 20th, um, 19, 2017 was a date that we will never forget. Even though we had a previous hurricane on September 6, but it wasn't as devastating as the one we had close to two weeks after. So Hurricane Maria has, um, I think, has divided our time as a country and, and as churches, as before Maria and after Maria. That's usually the way we relate to it, the way we refer to it. Um, uh, at first, it was very challenging. Well, it still is, but it was a challenge that we have never faced before. Um, no communication, no gas available, no way to get food, banks closed, post office closed, so even if people wanted to help, they couldn't send anything. Um, the time it took for things to get here, um, either by humanitarian flights, if you were able to coordinate something like that, or just uh, regular ships. So it was very difficult. Those, I would say that those first three weeks were very, very difficult, very hard. Um, People were uh, in shock, uh, many houses destroyed, obviously, those from people that were most vulnerable and the most poor, well, the they, were, they were the ones that were hit the hardest because were the houses that were in worse shape or they were in wood and tin sheets, roofs, but not built the right way. So even though that might be a construction not as strong as a cement roof, but they were not built correctly either because these are poor people. So most likely they are not able to get the best materials or to get the best labor to have everything the way it should have been. Obviously we didn't know that before. We found that out afterwards. Um, so if you ask me what has been the most, the, the best out of all this is that uh, the church in general um, have been, I would say, forced by God or pushed by God to go outside and do what we were always supposed to be doing. Not that we didn't, but maybe not with the intensity, with the openness um, of that was required. And I would not, I would say, obviously, after the hurricane even more, but we shouldn't have waited for a hurricane to come. Um, and I think that we learned that lesson. Uh, in our church, for example, this is the first Baptist church of Rio Piedras, which is literally the first Baptist church of Puerto Rico. Uh, it was established in 1899 by missionaries of the American Baptist Home Mission Societies. And this was a church that from here, the gospel was spread throughout Puerto Rico. But what we recall recently, something that we should have known by heart, but maybe we missed it through history, is that a very strong hurricane called San Siriaco happened early in the 20th century, a few years after this church was, formed, was established. And was that hurricane that was an opportunity for the Baptist churches to spread the gospel throughout Puerto Rico because most of the help that came was uh, coordinated through the pastor of this church, Hugh P. McCormick, throughout Puerto Rico. And they went with brigades to provide assistance to the different cities together. So they brought assistance with the gospel throughout. And that allowed uh, Reverend McCormick to know more about the island and be able to uh, make a better plan on how to take the gospel uh, throughout. 
So these are the historic details that sometimes you miss. You may have heard it, but you, well, it was nice. I think that this hurricane so many years later, um, it have helped us to also go out to spread the good news and the gospel. Obviously, we couldn't have done it alone. Um, we were in the middle of a crisis, and the church is the people, not the building. Our building was not, uh, didn't suffer much, thank God. And that was one, the, one of the first reflections we have then. If God allowed this building to be preserved, our purpose is in it. So it's not for us to be happy that we had our buildings okay, but it was to use it. And to be honest, it was basically the only thing we had. Because our people are older adults, most of them. Circumstances were not easy, like to be out in the streets, no traffic lights, um, no electricity, so there was no lighting at night. They couldn't be out. It was very dangerous for many of them to do that. But the building was here. And they were uh, willing, we were willing, to put that in God's hand and just say, this is what we have, God, just use it. And God took it seriously, basically because it's his, it's not ours, so God did it. And we were, uh, we started to cook a few days after the hurricane out of the need of the homeless in the area, not knowing of how many other people were also being hungry and not having food available. Um, if you ask me if we had the food available, no, we did not, but it came. It came from everywhere, from even people who heard that we were feeding people and they just dropped by, stopped by and dropped a bag of food, to literally trucks, trucks full of boxes of food. If you ask me who did that, I have to say God, because I never asked for it. It just came. Um, and from September 25th up to December 14, we were able to cook over 17,000 meals from this kitchen. Who cooked? Everybody. People from the church who were able later on to be here every day. People from the community, our neighbors, that probably we would say hi from time to time, but that was it. Now they're friends, they're not just nearby, who people who live or work nearby, now they are friends. Um, pastors nearby came, and this became the operation center for the recovery of our neighborhood. Um, the priest from the nearby Catholic church, and we created uh, six different committees. Uh, and I said, we, we the community, not we the church, but we the community. And the students from the university, students from the high school nearby, residents from these areas, these neighborhoods, business owners, other churches, people from other churches, leaders, church leaders from other churches. Um, everybody just put their hand and did something. And thanks to that, we were able to recover faster and without total uh, support from outside sources, I'm, I'm specifically referring to municipal, state, or federal money. That came later. But at those first weeks, the community did it. And we were able to work together, even though there was a huge diversity. I think that being a Baptist helps a lot on that, you know. Um, we are, were able to leave our principles of liberty of conscience and embrace, respect, and, and be able to recognize the strength that everybody was willing to put at the table just to help. Many people showed up, and I remember a woman who came up and she was just crying and crying and crying. She was going through her own uh, process of, of, of realizing what had just happened. And she said, I'm so depressed, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I just looked at her and said, well, you can come here every day, we need help. And she looked at me like, I came for help and you're asking me to come to help. And I just say, trust me, come. She stayed that day. By the end of the day, she was so happy. She said, I'm coming back again. She kept coming every day. She felt a lot better. And she realized that when she helped others, 
She was not looking too much to herself, to her situation, but even her situation was better at the end of the few days. Resources were able to be given to her and she was doing a lot better. Um, everybody jo joined forces. And so besides the meals that were served from here, we were able to uh, join with other groups, like uh, for example, the North Carolina Baptist Men Disaster Relief. They stayed here and they have been here since. So they did water purification during those few months, not only in San Juan, but also throughout Puerto Rico. So they went to over 27 municipalities to purify water, thousands of gallons of water. And then since January, they have been helping us to rebuild roofs of the people from the community. These are not church people. These are people who are getting to know that God loves them by bringing people from very far away to rebuild their roofs that otherwise they were not going to be able to have ready for a next season. Um, for us, every time it rains, the only thing we think is the people that still have tarps on top of their houses. And there are thousands still. Thank to God and thanks to the support that we've had from all these different groups, um, we have seen uh, God at work and helping these people. It's not only a roof, we are giving back hope. We are giving back uh, for them in a tangible way to know that God loves them. That, um, that someone that they don't even know is thinking about them and care for them. And that's what is being said through the work. So, uh, so far we have been receiving groups from all different uh, venues. Uh, we are very grateful for what American Baptist Home Mission Societies have done, what our brothers and sisters from so many hundreds, thousands of churches have done providing offerings so that our churches that were not probably uh, as, you know, their building was very uh, damaged after the storm. And it was hard for them to be able to help the community because they didn't have a place to do it. Um, and I think that the assistance that they have been receiving from ABHMS and the Baptist family in general has been awesome because they have been able to restore their structures to be able to help and to do that. So by helping them, it is really a multiplying factor. You know, you help them, but at the same time, you are rebuilding a center that could help them the community and, and continue to proclaim the word of God. And I have to, you know, just taking that on me, I want to thank our brothers and sisters for what they have been doing. Because I know that these are financial hard days for everybody here and there. Um, but at the same time, when we uh, reach out to God's promises and we trust God and we give generously, we know that God not only replaces what we have given, but give us even more. Um, and we don't do it because of that, we do it out of gratefulness. But I know that all the churches that have been so faithful in, in providing offering and the people who have given offering to help us through this crisis, I know that God will multiply that for them and their ministries and they will see blessings in, in, in inimaginable ways um, at their local uh, congregations. Um, we are, yes, we are tired, has been <laughs> many months of hard work, um, but at the same time, uh, we have been receiving, now we have been receiving groups, um, having those from young kids to older adults <laughs> doing all kinds of work, uh, from painting to cooking to um, just sharing and singing. Um, that has been a blessing. Uh, so we are getting ready not only to continue helping the people that still need help, um, preparing ourselves to, uh, because we're in the midst of another hurricane season right now. Um, we pray that nothing comes, <laughs> but we are a tropical island. We are in the hurricane path. It could happen and it could happen again anytime. And we must be ready. We are getting ready for that. We want to be responsible and good sewers. Um, but at the same time, I think that these experiences are going to help us to be in better position to 
also be ready to help our brothers and sisters in the mainland whenever they are also are in distress. Um, we are very grateful. And I know that we will be able to give back and let our brothers and sisters know that at the same time, the same way, we have been blessed by you. We will be willing to bless you any time that you might need us. So I just want to say thank you. Um, please uh, arrange mission trips. Come, we're more than happy to have you. And if you want to have, you know, a bonus after in the winter months, it's still hot here. It will be a great time to do a mission trip. Um, many people might question if it's really a mission trip, but I know you will enjoy it, being able to go to the beach in December and January. So, and trust me, we will work hard, but we will make sure that you have a good time too and that you uh, are able to enjoy the time, not only by seeing what God is doing, not only what you are able to do, to do um, uh, guided by the Holy Spirit, but also enjoy um, our country scenery and our people. And food is very good too. So things are better now, so we are able to cook better now. Uh, so please be, 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 just pray to God, and if God moves your heart, know that you can come anytime. To learn how you can be a part of rebuilding, restoring, and renewing Puerto Rico by volunteering, giving, praying, or in other ways, please visit abhms.org.